Cynthia. Cynthia Bailey. You gonna really let Nene do that to you again? Ciao. <laughs>
girl threw you under the bus is an understatement. But I'm not going to, you know, negate the fact that shit, what she said, like, it's kind of sneaky, Cynthia. Like, I don't think you invited the cookie lady for her to intentionally go after Tanya or confront her about Paul. But I think it was like, if it happens, it happens. Like, you knew that there was a chance that Tanya and that girl were going to, like, end up running to each other. That's just true tea. Like, Cynthia, you knew some shit, there was a possibility of something happening. But Kenya was like, girl, I only did that because you went and told Tanya about, you know, what we were talking about and you didn't want it to fill me in. Girl, Kenya, y'all both do the same exact thing. Y'all like to cover y'all asses in the situations where y'all got a little inside joke or some inside tea on somebody and y'all do all this talking about them. Cynthia realized you in Toronto was straight poochies. Like it was garbage, what you were doing. You want to sit there and do all this passive aggressive talking when you clearly were talking about Tanya and everybody's confused like who the hell is she talking about like bitch if you got something to say and if you genuinely were trying to tell confront tanya as you said at one point i genuinely wanted her you know to talk to her about it and everything no you didn't because you would have pulled her to the side instead when you saw that when you heard that she was like oh i'm happy my relationship everything's perfect you wanted to pop her little happy bubble because you mad that you can't get mark out of new york for more than two days to see you and your damn baby like that's the issue you want to pop everybody else's happy relationship bubble because your shit is burning up in flames um but nonetheless at least you know cynthia you jump from one like dominant relationship into another like you always become friends with domineering personalities and kenya is almost like nini like they are really one in the same but i'll just the one time i would give can you credit at least when Cynthia talks to her about something she hears her out she can say oh I see like she at least can apologize and take accountability Nene on the other hand the bitch can't apologize for nothing it's just not in her it's not her DNA to sit there and be accountable for her effed up actions that she be doing to people um but Kenya you was like girl yeah I did throw you in the bus but it's because I felt like you was telling Tanya and you tried to keep me out of it and she felt like it was kind of shady Ooh. Ooh, the back of my head is itching. I'm trying not to scratch because I got I got to perm this hole. Like my roots is really out today, so y'all ignore them hoes. But um, <laughs> um, but nonetheless, like you know, Cynthia accept the apology. They're cool. Um, and then Cynthia tells Kenya about how you know her and Nini are going to brunch to talk out you know their issues, and she's hoping you know they can figure something out. Um, so then. What happened after that? We see Marlo and uh, Portia talk because Marlo wants to see if she's coming to the little leopard lunch. And Portia was like, uh-uh, not doing it, not going. Because she sent that passive-aggressive invite talking about, oh, let's see if we can spot the lions and if you have stripes or something like that. And she didn't like it. Um, she ended up giving in and going later on in the episode. But Marlo was trying to see if she was going to go. And she said, nah, it ain't happen. So let's get to the big, you know the big whoopee of the episode which was Cynthia and Nini confronting each other the whole thing we saw from the preview um so they both sit down it's kind of awkward you can tell they're seeing who's gonna say something first but Nini ends up talking first kind of being like look you know we both said some messed up stuff um I just want to address the fact that you said I'm a toxic friend like what exactly does that mean now Cynthia like we were rooting for you we were all rooting for you like you back down and you let Nene do exactly what she always does, which is have you come chase her, make her feel better, coddle her. Like, oof. Ooh, let me not let you Ooh. Because I, I really could just rip Nene right now, but I'm trying to be a changed Christian. Okay, I'm trying to do better. But girl, Nene, if I was Cynthia, I would have let you have it because... She been holding in a lot of stuff. Like, girl, it's not just this season that you did this effed up mess to, to Cynthia. But nonetheless, Cynthia's like, yeah, you are a toxic like person. Maybe it's harsh. It's a harsh word. But she's like, but I'm a good friend. You're not going to tell me I wasn't a good friend. And, Nene, and Cynthia was like, no, like when you're a friend, you are absolutely a good friend. But when you're not, you discard people. You throw them away. And it's absolutely the truth. We have seen her do it multiple seasons. You know, with Portia, with Eva. And you be the ones doing the messed up stuff and to be mad when they try to confront you about it. When Eva tried to confront you about you doing that shady stuff, walking into her with the mic, when she specifically said, I will talk to you off camera, you were like, dang, Eva's going to be mad at me. You knew you were doing some effed up stuff. 
Um, and then at the reunion, you want to sit there and be like, uh, like, like annoyed that she was bringing it up with you. Like, if you ask me, last season's reunion was probably one of Nini's worst reunions. She didn't want to hear nobody out. She was constantly blaming other people. Every time she got confronted about her actions, it was like, I don't know what you're talking about, or you did this, so that's why I did this. And it's like tit for tat with this woman. She is like a grown ass kid. But she was like, you're going to sit there and call me toxic. I watched you do seven interviews and I finally did one. And it's like, so what if Nina Cynthia did seven interviews? She really wasn't talking shit about you. She was just talking about the dynamic of y'all's friendship. So if that girl is saying, girl, like you hurt my feelings. She was doing constant stuff to me. You should take heed to your best friend of 10, 15 years saying that you did some messed up stuff to her. Like, why are you not hearing it? Why are you only the, you the only person that has something done to that you're the victim of like wrong activities like bitch you are so annoying so then Cynthia's like oh I was a sister to you Cynthia's like well bitch I was a sister to you and she was like you know it's all about how uh I've watched you do this and this now if you ask me the starting downfall of Cynthia and Nini's relationship was when uh, Nini called Peter uh, a bitch when she, Cynthia asked her to apologize at the reunion Nini didn't she didn't want to and it's like your friend is asking you, like, can you at least apologize for cousin, ca calling my husband out his name? Because we all know for damn sure it had uh, it been reversed and Cynthia called Greg a bitch, it would have been World War Three. You would have been over her, asking her to do this. You would have iced her out like, Nene, you do stuff to people and then if they do nearly anything the same thing that you do to them, it's an issue. So if you can imagine you being pissed off at somebody else, why can't they be mad at you for doing something, Nene? Like, your word for the year is accountability, bitch. Accountability. Um, but, uh, Cynthia wasn't having it. In the beginning, she was like, no, like, I was able to say what I was saying. You said what you said. We both need to own our part in it. Well, you said this, and that's why I did this. I only called you weak and desperate. Toxic is so harsh. And it's like, so what? So what she said, toxic. Call her weak, desperate, and insecure. It's hurtful to her still. You need to own, whether she did seven interviews and you did one, you still have to take accountability for that one interview that you did that was totally effed up and you were definitely trying to rag on Cynthia. You even wanted her, call her boring at one point. Like, this isn't the first season that you've done this stuff to Cynthia. This is only the first time that Cynthia has grown a backbone and, it, and called your ass out, ass out for your activities, okay? We've all, and you want to sit there, oh, you want to sit there and play like you don't have this other side, people don't have this other, see this other side to you. What other side are you talking about, uh, Nini? Lanithia, fill us in on this damn 50 cent that you keep talking about that Cynthia is. We've been watching y'all for damn 14 years. There's no way that we're not going to see this part of Cynthia. Like, you mad all of a sudden because, like, she can talk back to you and she's not letting you run all over her. That's why you mad. And that's this new person that everybody's supposed to see. Like, bitch, miss me with that. So then she, Cynthia's like, girl, it is what it is. I'm happy in life. You need to live your life. I'm happy right now, and we need to leave it at that. And Nene was like, "You don't want, you don't think I want you, to, uh, want you to be happy." And she ends up walking out, and she pulls the same shit. And Cynthia at first kind of sat there, and Nene ran out doing this fake crying. The makeup looked awful. She had four different colors on her face. Why she was yellow around her eyes, pink around her cheeks, and then just dark cocoa brown around her forehead and chin, chin. Like it was so bad. But I knew she was pulling some manipulative shit because she left her damn purse on the table. So she was either going to come back or she knew Cynthia was going to run after her. And that's what happened. Cynthia, I would have let that, left that bitch out there to cook. You would be on broil, okay? I was not going to walk out there. If you want to run out there and do the same shit, then you had it. I would have got my ass in the car and left. But Cynthia, even her confession was like, I know I got to be the bigger person because Nene has a hard time taking accountability. And that's why she has a hard time taking accountability because you do shit like this, Cynthia. Like, she knows you. She knows. She puts on a couple of crocodile tears and say, oh, you know, I really love you and stuff like that. You're going to do this all the time. So Cynthia runs out there trying to hug her like, Nene, 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 it's okay. Let's hug. Like, we can get over this. We both said some mean things. And Nene's straight giveaway for me when I know that she's full of it is when she said, and that's real. Like, what's that uh thing? Uh, what, why did I get married? Well, Marcus always be like, you know what I'm saying? And girl could be like, that's how I know you lying. Could you be like, I know what I'm saying? Nene's giveaway is, and that's real. Like, I really loved you and I don't want to hurt you. And that's real. That's what she says. 
But Cynthia had to be the first one to apologize and say sorry. And then she went at the end, well, I'm, you know, I'm sorry for what I did. Like, so blanket. It wasn't like, girl, I did this to you. I know it probably made you feel this way. And I really apologize for that. You give these bullshit ass apologies, Nene. Everybody's over it. The whole world sees right through you. The only reason you try to come and give everybody all the branches this season is because your money is drying up. The well is dry. You ain't getting as much, you know, comedy tours. Like, girl, you are getting iced out and you want to call yourself the HBIC, the queen in charge or whatever. But girl, it is a mutiny on your hands and you do not know what to do. From every storybook that we read, we all know the horrible queen gets her ass beheaded. And bitch, you are getting in the process of getting beheaded by the damn public and Bravo. Um, but she was like, yeah, and you know, I just felt like you were trying to tell, convince everybody that I was this horrible person, that I was toxic. Like, how could you try, try to convince everybody that I was such a bad person? She ain't got to convince us that you was a bad person, bitch. We've been watching this damn show for so long. We know your ways, Nene. Like, everybody knows your ways. Like, she doesn't have to try and convince the whole world of nothing. The only reason, like, people were really behind her and probably were more vocal about it is because Cynthia was more vocal about it. So we was like, hell yeah, kudos, Cynthia. Like, we all agree with you right now. And you did not know what to do. That's just what it was. You did not know what to do. That Cynthia grew a backbone and was not just licking your ass all, all the time like Marlo does. Like, she's tired. Her lips is chapped from kissing your ass all the damn 24-7 of y'all's relationship. Like, this relationship is one-sided. You always do this to everybody. You want to, you know, knock them off when you feel like they did something to you. Like, the shit is old. It's dry. Of course, Cynthia apologizes. They hug. And she was like, well, you know, we both were just stuck in our ways. You know, we didn't know who to say something first. And it's like, well, you blocked me. And it's like, that shit right there is what, what we mean. You still had to put in there how, oh, you blocked me first. And like, it's just like, ugh. Um, but then after that, let's get to the brunch. Because I'm going to run off all day about that damn, uh, the, I mean, yeah, the leopard lunch. Because I'm going to run off all day about the, that meeting. It was straight bullshit at the end of the day is what it was. And Cynthia... Girl, she manipulated your ass real fast. Mr. Miyagi did. All I can say is... I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! How dare you! Learn something from this! So let's move on to the brunch. Basically, um, Cynthia ends up picking up Eva, her pregnant outfit. So cute. I love the leopard sweater. She came with sneakers because she's like, bitch, my feet are swollen. I'm getting ready to give birth to this baby. So they make it to the restaurant and Candy ends up coming after them. But Eva's having contractions and she's trying to hold it in, but she's breathing. Y'all, Eva looks good pregnant. She looks, she got, she has a beautiful pregnancy glow. Her makeup was on point. Like everything was on. But her stomach was like, you're ready to drop. Her baby was like, bitch, get me out of here. So they called Dr. Jackie because um, uh, Candy and Eva had the same doctor. So Dr. Jackie was like, girl, go to a hospital. She's like, no, I don't want to go. Like only eight months. Like I ain't got the nursery ready. She was like, well, if you want to go, I can, you know, kindly talk Candy through giving birth. Candy said, hell no. Nah. Bitch, my hands ain't going nowhere near your coochie. You better take your ass to the hospital. So Cynthia ends up going with her, dropping her off at the hospital. So now it's Candy, Tanya, sitting there waiting. Another hour goes by, Kenya shows up. Kenya only get there for seven minutes. And I, bitch, I agree with you. Nene, you can't have your event at three and then show up two, up two and a half hours later. I'm not doing it. I'm not waiting on your ass. Um, But then she comes with this whole entourage and I'm like, where the hell did these people come from? Like, what damn hiring site did y'all hire these, like, did y'all like, pay these women to come here for? So then she's like, oh, my friends are over here. And then, like, ten women come up. Candy's like, who the hell are these women? Um, uh, She's like, oh, yeah, we come here and we have this lunch every year, you know, for the sisterhood. And it's like, bitch, you went and found you a whole nother group of friends because you got iced out by everybody else, voted off Gillingham's Island. Since you wanted a sisterhood so much, you went and left and made you a whole new one. And it's like, you do this thing every year, apparently. I would think that we would have seen this already on the show. It would have been somewhere, like in the past season, if you if you honestly did this every year. But she said, oh, I usually don't invite the other women, whatever. So they're sitting down and Marlo comes in with her lime green outfit. Super cute, little too many ruffles for me. Um, But I like loud stuff like that. But then they're talking about Portia. 
And Marlon's like, yeah, I tried to get Portia to come. And Nene's like, look, I done did what I did. I done texted her, called her, so I don't know why she's surprised. I'm not kissing her ass no more. We was like, bitch, people stay kissing your ass. They be all up in your colon literally so much that you they be kissing your ass so much. People's lips are chapped. They're done, Nene. But Portia's little old dick self walks in and sits down. And Portia basically explained, look, I thought this was going to be a whole bunch of bull. I didn't want to come from the drama. But she's like, we can talk about that later because they're not going to discuss their stuff in front of all these random ass people that came. Like, were they just waiting for you, Nene? Were they on the other side of the restaurant? Did they all come on a party bus together? I'm confused. Um, but then Eva calls to fill them in on, you know, the whole pregnant thing that she was dilated one centimeter. And then Nene shaded the hell out of Eva. Like, I'm confused. Like, I thought you apologized to her and y'all were good. Because when Candy said she was on the phone, she's like, I'm talking to Portia. Like, it was hella rude. Like, damn, listen to your friend. Like, I'm confused. Like, where this, like, it came from towards Eva. Uh, thought y'all made up. See, this is the shit I be talking about. You just so ass backwards, Nene. Um, but yeah, her and Portia, like, we can talk about it another time. Candy's sitting there like, I don't know who the hell these women are. This is the fakest sisterhood I done ever seen. And that's where the episode ends. Um, Kenya came and went. She's, uh, y'all, Kenya sat down for damn seven minutes. But of course, Nene didn't care. Kenya came. Um, but y'all tell me what you thought about the episode. Did Nene and Cynthia have a good conversation? Or did Cynthia get manipulated into, you know, doing what she always does, which is go running after Forrest Gump herself? Um, as far as the relationship with, uh, Portia and Nene, or, or Portia and Kenya, we see next week that, uh, Portia tells Kenya that she was effed up for calling Tanya out her name. And then we see Kenya, damn, Mark put her in her place and everybody was happy about it. Um, but yeah, that was the episode. Tell me what you think. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hell, donate a dollar to my cash app if you feel like this was a good video. Anything is appreciated. Y'all can, uh dedicated towards my i gotta get a new tripod so consider the tripod fund anytime y'all give me money for cash app or anything like that definitely believe it is going right back into you know the quality for you guys on my youtube channel um so yeah i appreciate you guys i'll be right back to talk to you about love and hip-hop i'm um, we'll gonna go watch those too and i will talk to you guys on the flip side deuces